Okay, so time for some mushroom construction. I love these shapes, they look very abstract, don't they? So let's start with the stock. Basically, I'm just stitching. So you can again vary the length of this stock depending on how long you want your mushroom stock to be. And you can widen it as well to make it fatter. So you can see these are slightly different in width. But regardless of the size, the principles stay the same. So I'm starting at the top and I'm leaving the top open for stuffing. And like I did with the acorns, I'm doing a couple of stitches over each other just to secure. And then I'm working down the edge, just taking my needle over and then through, making sure I catch both layers of felt. This stitch is called whip stitch. I don't think I mentioned that before. So it's a simple stitch to do. that there are these little pointy shapes and this is what makes the, the stock more 3D rather than just two layers sewn together which you definitely notice on the likes of the sort of broader stems and so we're basically just lining them all up and stitching all the edges together so you just Once you get to that bottom, now <laughs> your triangles, it doesn't matter if they're not all the same size. We can trim them if you've cut them out the same as me, unequal. <laughs> Felt is very forgiving, so we can trim as we stitch. And I'm just basically stitching this edge of these pointy bits here. And then we want to join the next pointy bit on. So all, all the points basically go together in the middle. So when you put the, all the points together, you can see which edges need to join on. It's probably a bit tricky for you to see because I'm using black. So I'm not sure how clear this video is going to be. But it should be very self-explanatory when you're working on it yourself. So I've stitched that corner and I'm just going to take my thread back up to that point so I can stitch down the next point. And again, I've come to the bottom of that point, so I'm going to go back up. This is the last point that needs stitched. Or the last two edges of the pointy bits. It's so technical. And notice with working with black felt that just get these little black hairs everywhere. But we'll just ignore that. So I've joined all the, the points together. I've got a little extra bit here because that point was too big. So I just trimmed that off. 
I just, I always feel that I want to add roots to my mushrooms. So at this point, you could just leave your strands of thread. You could add some more and create some roots at the bottom of your mushroom. But I'm just going to stitch my end, my thread in. But that's an option for you. So now to put the mushroom cap together. So basically I want to stitch this longer edge of the black piece onto the edge of the circular piece. And I'm doing this in exactly the same way as I've done with all my other stitching pieces. Start with a couple of stitches over the top for anchoring and then stitching over the two using whip stitch. So as you're working around your circle, you'll just need to keep moving that top piece so that the edges line up. You just do it bit by bit. That really doesn't matter because when it comes to stuffing and then all the added decoration you're not going to notice this tiny little overlap of fabric. So I'm just going to now stitch the edges of my black together and I'll just fill in that little gap that was left in the white as well. So we just catch that. So don't worry if you the way you've cut out your fabric isn't perfect. That happens. And so I'm just doing the same stitches and joining those two black edges. Of that pattern piece. And so you can see that I have my mushroom top. And yes, there is a little bit of a puckering, but like I say, once that is filled with stuffing, you're not going to notice it. So I'm just going to finish my thread here. Now we're ready to attach the two together. We attach the two mushroom pieces exactly the same way as we did with the acorn and we basically are running stitch along this edge, gathering this felt and then attaching it onto the mushroom stalk. So we need to fill it with stuffing first. And because this is a long sort of tube shape, you really want something to help you stuff your stuffing in. I find a paintbrush is the best way because the bristles kind of have grasp onto the 
stuffing and it helps it stay down. When you use a sort of smooth object, it just comes out and kind of takes the stuffing with it. So I always use an old paintbrush. This is just a little tip that I've developed over the years that I find works best for me, but you maybe have your own special preferred way of getting stuffing into an object. So you're best working with little bits of stuffing at a time. I kind of went a bit overboard there. used quite a lot of stuffing to go in quite a small shape to fill really. It's always surprising just how much stuffing you need and I have not stuffed it right up to the top because that's not necessary because this is going to go and sit inside. You're going to take your mushroom maybe a centimetre at the most down and then gather this around it so you're not needing to fill the stock right up to the top of your stuffing. But I'm happy with this and how it's stuffed. And now I'm going to stuff this, but before that, I am going to do the running stitch around the edge. And that means I don't have to battle with um, stuffing <laughs> while I'm stitching. It's a lot trickier when the stuffing is in. So and a couple of small stitches on top of each other to anchor the thread and then I am doing a running stitch all the way around this edge. stitch all the way around. I'm just going to pull it a little bit and then I'm going to fill. I'm stuffing the top and I'm pushing because obviously I want to create a puffed out effect. So I'm just keep adding stuffing bit by bit. I've finished stuffing this mushroom cap and it's all looking lovely and plump now. And what I did was pulled the gathering thread here and I've secured it so that I wanted to make a gap the same size roughly so that this stock could fit in. And then that means I can sew this on in place. So I secured this hole by, as I always do, doing a couple of stitches on top of each other. And now what I want to do is line up my seams and just pop this stem in, stock, whatever you want to call it, and do exactly the same as I did with the acorns. I am going through the running stitches that I did around the base of the cup and I'm catching the stock with it. I'm just going to work my way around the mushroom and you don't need to work each running stitch at a time. I'm kind of doing it a few, miss a few and when I come back round I'll do the ones that I missed and it just, this makes it easier I find. So that you're kind of grabbing a bit from all corners first 
and then you go back and fill in the gaps. You can be fiddly again, just like the mushrooms, but just persevere and felt is very forgiving and the stuffing makes it all very squishy. So you'll be fine. So that's me added on the bottom and the top part of the mushroom together, nice and secure. And now it's time for decorating the mushroom. Now, here, because I'm using a really thick felt and this circular design that I've got on the bottom is not huge, then I'm not getting much of a frill effect just through the fabric. So I have ended up stitching it on, like you can see here, and I've actually started to do it. Here, with the thread that I had left over from stitching that on. Um, it's up to you how you want to decorate it. You can add it or just leave it blank and then you can go to town on the top of the, the mushrooms. So here you can see I've added in some sequins. You could add beads. I've also added some satin stitch, just a regular sort of shapes. You might like to go for um, uniform circles. There's so many different things you could do. This is just embroidery thread. You could get beads on the go. Um, what else? You could applique different colours of felt on using, you know, the same colour of the stock on there. Or if you're going for a completely different colour, you could use, you know, the red felt for the instead of the black and then add on white dots little applique dots that's again another choice for you I love for me th this is the chance for me to just start mark making and this is what's the kind of creative part and it's what is you adding your own personality to things so by mark making I mean just like little stitches could be little crosses just any kind of well these are little straight stitches so I've just added them onto the stock. And for me, that just adds a bit of creativity to it and a bit of texture and just a bit of interest for the eyes. And see how you decide to decorate your mushrooms and fill them with your own personal style and creativity.